Hi guys, Ree here from mummyof4.com. Welcome back to my channel. And a house tour three years, yes, that's right, three years after we moved into our new home. If you're new here, my husband renovated this property at the end of 2019, just before the world went mad, and we moved in with just 18 hours notice, actually, mid pandemic. It was all a little bit crazy. There was a whole playlist of vlogs on my channel if you like renovation content, that kind of thing, where I documented the whole thing. So now we are three years on, technically three years and a few weeks, because I was supposed to film this video, and then that week I was supposed to film it, I had COVID. So better late than never, it's three years and a few weeks. So I'm gonna take you on a little tour of our home. I'm gonna be honest with you, this is gonna be a very real, raw tour of the house. I have not done any additional cleaning on tidying on top of what I would normally do. So some areas of the house look reasonably tidy if you don't look too closely because some of it could do with a bit of a clean it, the whole house could do with with a bit of a top to toe if i'm honest i just thought it was more realistic to show you how it is day to day rather than how it is after i've just finished cleaning before allowing anyone else back into the house because let's face it we're all about keeping it real aren't we so in this tour i'm going to show you things we've done since renovating things that I feel we did really well and I really pleased with I would recommend and then perhaps things I not so happy with and I would perhaps think about changing if at all possible anyway without further ado let's take a look around our home so starting in the living room this room as with all the rooms looked completely different when we had the house then when we moved in we hadn't yet bought the new sofa. We had a purple sofa from the old playroom. The dining table was squished in here because we hadn't extended yet, so there was nowhere else for the table. The chairs didn't match. And then slowly but surely, as the extension went up, the table moved, I got new chair covers, and we had the new sofa. Just in time for me to get COVID the first time, actually. But then the sofa was the other way around. And then last summer, we started thinking about changing the room around. We thought maybe the TV could move. We thought maybe we could swap the sofa over to by the window. But then one of you clever lot in the comments wondered if it would fit where it is now. And do you know what? I love it. I absolutely love it. This room feels so light and airy now. I loved snuggling up on the sofa watching TV where the sofa was, but then whenever we had guests, I felt like we were walking into the back of the sofa and it just felt a bit ridiculous. Now, this is just so much nicer for when we've got friends over, which obviously we didn't have when we first moved here because it was illegal to go into other people's homes. How mad is that? It's not ideal for watching TV because you're watching kind of side on. But you know what, the amount of TV we actually watch, I don't even mind that. Sometimes we have this fire thingy, it goes over there. But to be honest, it's quite nice to have the buffet there and then the girls move that out of the way and they play with their dolls and things down in that corner. It worked out really nicely with the Christmas tree in this corner. And the children just have a lot more space for sort of dancing around, playing in here. And it's really convenient because when the children are off school, I can sit over here with my laptop and watch them as they play in the garden, keep half an eye on them and actually work at the same time, which I need to do during the school holidays. A few people did suggest we put the TV in this corner, but to be honest, it's just a little bit too big to fit there. These units were one kind of next to each other and I plonked one in front of the other just as a temporary thing, but you know what? I don't hate it and the children use it as like a play space. Base. It also stops them from going so close to the TV that they put their fingers all over it, which is not a bad thing. Still got a few things from the old house, namely these fake flowers they came over, but most of the rest of these bits and pieces were bought for this place. I can't remember if this photo wall was up on the last house tour or if I did it afterwards, but these are some photographs from our Disney cruise and Walt Disney World trip. There aren't any from Paris actually because I did that. There you go, that answers my question. I must have done this after Walt Disney World, but before Paris. So I think the rug has been replaced since the last house tour as well. Now this rug is a Dunelm one. It's nice and fluffy. That sounds a bit squelchy sticky because it's been stuck down with some rug stick thing, so it doesn't budge too much. This is so comfy for doing yoga on. I still use a yoga mat which I just stashed behind here so that it's always accessible for me to use. But to be honest, doing yoga on a yoga mat on top of a fluffy rug. I find so much more sort of kind to my knees. And again, it's a really good room for exercising in now because we've got a lot more floor space. Moving into the kitchen, very little has changed in here the last year. I do put seasonal bits and pieces out. You've probably noticed 
like we have a Christmas soap thing at Christmas and we had Easter bits out not long ago. One of the best things in this kitchen is actually could be done in any kitchen and it's just using baskets to sort things. So for example, like I'm quite short, I can pull down a basket, this is all popcorn, sort through that and reach it up quite easily. But if that was just stuff on a shelf, I'd need a step still. It'd be difficult to keep tidy. As you can see, that's not immaculate, but things are roughly sorted into biscuits or chocolates or snacks, whatever. Notice the stuff that we shouldn't be eating is nice and high up and out of the way. I've also got canisters and things inside the, the um, cupboards rather than on the counters because one of the main things I wanted here was to free up as much counter space as possible. I have a theory that clutter attracts more clutter. By keeping spaces as clear as possible, it just means that less clutter is attracted. Now I did have a vase of fake flowers here, but my husband managed to smash the vase about two days ago. Just the corner of it chipped off, not even sure how it happened. So I do need to get some sort of new centerpiece something just to break that up. How do we manage to achieve clear worktops? Other than the toaster and the kettle, I was adamant those were gonna be hidden away as well, but I actually think they're quite pretty, so I like those out. And I also like my fake plants, because do you know what? They had a splash of color and I can't kill them. So one of the uh, reasons we managed to keep clear surfaces is because of cupboards like this. This is my husband's cupboard of doom. <laughs> so in here, okay, the Mickey Mouse waffle maker isn't his. That's pretty much everyone else's, but this is all the stuff that he would have all over the worktops if it wasn't for this cupboard. So he likes these coffees from this coffee machine, but this coffee machine is actually plumbed inside that cupboard. So he opens this door, makes the coffee, and then closes it again, rather than having it all over the place. Now you could use the same principle with a cupboard to hide kettles, toasters, anything like that, microwave. We did go for the built-in microwave, which I can't recommend highly enough. So it just keeps more stuff off the counters because we've not got loads and loads of counter space in here. So if we also had a microwave and a coffee machine and canisters and all the things, it would feel cluttered. And I do love just having the clear surfaces. It's less to clean because all the stuff's hidden away and it just feels like it looks a little bit tidier. So all the tea and coffee making stuff lives in there. And again, in here, we've got lots of baskets and things. I have moved around the children's snacks since um, our last house tour. So now the children pack their own during and after school snacks and those are in those baskets they can access themselves. Everything in here is in baskets actually so that I can pull things out, see what I've got, clean it and put it back away. And then our extension, which I guess we can't keep calling the extension forever, is just the dining room now. This little table has come in from the playroom. I will show you the playroom slash bedroom when we go through in a minute. But yeah, this room, Hasn't changed a great deal. Really, really pleased with it though. These are the chairs from the old house. These uh, chair covers have been absolutely amazing. So these are three years old and I bought these pretty much the week we moved in. There's some sort of quite tatty looking black chairs underneath and these tidied up the chairs. They're easy to wash because numerous times I've had to wash them because the children have thrown something all over them. Can't recommend those highly enough. I will link everything I'm talking about um, below. There's like blog posts room by room. And then this thing I get asked about all the time. So it's like um, like a plastic rollout cover thing. It's not actually stuck to the table with glue or anything, but it's kind of stuck itself to the table with suction over time, if that makes sense. And I like it because it looks like the table is just wood, so it looks nice and neat and tidy. But if you look how thick it is, it really protects it and it's really easy to clean. Cannot recommend that highly enough. The price of this on Amazon has gone up considerably since I bought it, but I would still buy it even at the higher price because I would say it's absolutely worth it. Fake tree from Amazon still going strong, I guess two and a half years on because this room was finished just a few days before Christmas 2020. The little sofas, I've got a few of these about the house. These are home base, they're all linked as well. I've plumped up the cushions with extra stuffing, but other than that, I think that's about the only change in here, extra stuffing in the cushions. And luckily the sun is out. So we will be having these doors open and utilizing the garden quite a lot quite soon, I hope. Almost forgot to show you, I'm still using my organization station, which is really, really handy. The printables and the frames and things are all linked 
in a blog post below, but all those printables are totally free if you want to set up your own. Now into my laundry room and then office. So the laundry room has stayed very, very similar since last year. I think the dryer is new since last year. This is, oh, let me get this right, it's not a condenser dryer. It is a heat pump dryer. So basically it's quieter, it takes longer to dry things, but it's significantly cheaper to run. So even though it's on for longer, it still uses less electricity, so it works out cheaper to run. It is a pain that it takes longer, but equally it's so much quieter that I don't really mind having it on while I'm working, because I work the other side of this wall. All in all, I would say I am quite pleased with it. So all of our washing either goes directly in the dryer and then from the dryer into the relevant person's box or the stuff that doesn't go into the tumble dryer gets hung up. I'm not even sure how messy this is. Oh, it needs emptying. See, told you I didn't even look around before now to tidy up. This really does need emptying because it's so full, stuff won't dry. But basically, when this is not too full, there's a radiator in here and the wetter stuff goes in here and then the stuff that back here, so that's dry. The stuff that side is the driest. I empty it from that side across. And it works really well. Some people say, you know, does stuff really dry? It, do, it does, it really works really well. As long as it is no fuller than it is right now. That's too full. I'm gonna be honest with you, I need to, I need to get on with that. After I film this video, I'm gonna empty that. And then into my office, which did have a little makeover very, very recently. Last year, you would have seen that I had a desk across here and nothing across here actually. Quite recently, my husband helped me out. I ordered a load of stuff from Ikea. We replaced the desk that I was gonna sell, but I did not sell the desk. Bella found somewhere else in the house, a genius other place in the house to put it. So I'll show you that in a second. So this is just like two tables and this is a set of drawers. My husband was very upset because he thought that the, the lines on those drawers weren't straight enough as he was putting them together. I don't know who your thoughts are on that, but it really doesn't upset me as much as it upset him. So I've got this little cabinet that was, I think it was a cross and now it's sideways, works quite well. But I've just got a lot more desk space. So now I can use, you know, my computer and my laptop simultaneously, which I need to do sometimes. I've got this light set up behind for when I'm filming and my podcast microphone thing, which were already set up, but now it's just so much easier to use. I've now got enough space to set up cameras, film products, actually get something out and write. And just having this extra space has been a game changer. And also I can now sit, oh, on my new chair. Did I show you the chair? Look how pretty my pink chair is. Anyway, I can now sit like this and rest my arms one either side on here to use the computer. So apparently by resting your arm like that to use the mouse and stuff, you're less likely to get carpal tunnel, apparently according to my physio. Anyway, I am thrilled with that as it is. Um, I'm not sure if I showed you these drawers before. So I've got these little drawer dividers in here. They're all batteries for my cameras. And then I've got like tape and stationary type stuff. All the hard drives, look, these are, are not even half of the hard drives I have for um, all the work I do. So that's a lot. A lot of these wires and things kept in here. Different cameras I use, more hard drives. And then I've got lenses for my camera. That's up over there. This little thing I take out and about with me when I'm filming and I just put extra batteries and SD cards in there, filters, and then I've got the rest of my GoPro accessories and tripods and various things in there. So that's my kind of kit. I've got another one of these sofas in here, which is great. You will have seen me sit on this to film. The little pictures that the children did for me as my office art are still going strong. This cupboard was a really good, thing we did. So I think we did this back, would have been 2020. So originally my office was just this boiler, <laughs> just looking like a boiler. And then my husband put this cupboard around it, which I bought from Ikea. And doesn't that look neater? And then also he pointed out, I can put my tripods in there out of the way. Hidden, see, no one knows apart from now I've shown everyone. So I, I'm definitely thinking that that looks neater than just a boiler. And then I've got my fake flowers and a little candle going. See, fake flowers, because I can't kill them keeps it neat and tidy and easy. So I'm absolutely in love with this space as it is. I can't tell you how much of a difference it's made to me as I spend quite a lot of time in here working. I've also got this clipboard system across here. These are each of the projects I'm working on at the moment. 
starting with this one. So I'll bring the project down. It's got everything I need on it. So if it's brand work, I'll like have all the brief and everything. Work on the project. When it's finished, file it, they all move along. So I know at a glance what I'm supposed to be doing every time I sit down. Back out into the hall. I think we had this mirror last year, but I'm gonna show you anyway. There you go. That is a pretty shiny mirror. I think that's from the range. Photos on the wall are the same. All the understairs storage is the same, but I will give you a little look just in case you haven't seen it. See, here's an example of something I should have tidied up before showing the internet. Look, there's coats on the floor, there's all sorts. But you know what? It's better in there, behind these doors, than, do you know where else it would be? It would be on the floor. Also the shoes, let's have a look at these shoe cupboards of doom, shall we? These should have been tidied. Yeah, see, should have tidied that before showing the internet, shouldn't I? But I didn't, there's, that's how it looks. I tidy it periodically and they go all in neatly and get sorted and then within five minutes it looks like this again. But again, where are these better? A mess in here or a mess there? I know where I prefer it. Here we have the calyx. I do get some people on the internet going, why have you got so much calyx free? Because I would rather the junk hidden in there than all over my floor. Now, the children have one of these boxes each. So this is Zara's, Bella's, Williams, goes up in age. In here, she's got like forest school kit, stuff she brings home from school. And then I've got one box to sort periodically. But when they come home from school, their bags go in there or whatever they've just brought home. It's just a place where they can find their stuff easily and it's all sorted and out of the way because otherwise it would be all over the floor. In here, we've got our downstairs loo. See, should have tidied that up, shouldn't I? Should have tidied that up before filming. No, I didn't because this is a realistic house tour. This is one of the best things we did. This space saving toilet with a sink over it was a game changer. I think when we bought the house, there was no shower in here. It was just a toilet and a sink. That's all that could fit. But now we've managed to squeeze a shower in because of this space saving thingy. Now into Dylan's room slash the playroom. Now last year, this would have been Dylan's room because he was living at home full time. Now he barely comes home to be honest because even during the holidays, he's doing a music course. He's off doing his music-y kind of stuff and playing with his band and making albums and things. So when he does come home, this is a very easy to pull out sofa bed. It's literally, I can, if I'm not holding the camera, do it with one hand. So we just literally swivel that that way, pull it out with one hand, chuck the duvet on it, which is hidden in the wardrobe, done, it's a bed. And then in the day, he's got like a lounge area to use. But the rest of the time, it's a playroom, which the children are loving, and I'm actually loving having this kind of second sitting room space. So we've got some of the children's Disney toys, which are sort of stored up here, they can be brought down to play. Some shelves that I think we styled these for Christmas. We did some Eastery stuff on there, and then they're just kind of Ikea plants up there the rest of the time. Now this was my desk, which, look, I should have cleaned this before filming, but I'm not because this is, you know, hashtag real life. Anyway, this is the desk that was in my office. And Bella said, mummy, mummy, can we have it for the playroom? I'm like, oh, I don't know if it'll go. Cause I was thinking over there because the tent was over here. And she said, no, look, mummy, it could go here. I was like, Bella, you might be a genius. So I got these two little chairs. So the girls spend so much time sitting side by side doing colouring there, I cannot even tell you. It's been fantastic. And right, we're gonna open these drawers. I haven't even opened these drawers in ages. The children use these. I fill them with drawer dividers. I've asked them to keep them neat. Let's see how they're doing. Okay, drum roll. Oh, not bad, not bad girls. So I bought these drawer dividers and asked them to keep, you know, like with like. Look, that's one type of pen. They're just gel pens, gosh. I knew they were thrilled with these draw dividers, but they're actually sticking to the system. I am shocked. Shocked, I tell you. And this side was our assets. It's also pretty tidy, like pencils. Well, do you know what? I'm shocked. Pretty, pretty shocked. I'm, I've got to say, they've kept this much tidier than I realised. I've just said, whenever they leave the room, can they just clear the desk? And then I've asked, can they just, like, they're going to use pencils to so just do this. Use the pencils and then put them away. And um, not having been micromanaging the tidying of this desk, I am shocked and amazed they've kept it that nice. But do you know what? When there is a system, it is easier to stick to it. So all this is just toys. They are sort of sorted by category. So like 
that's all Duplo. They still play with Duplo, actually. There's loads of Duplo. They love Lego as well, but they will still play with Duplo. This one is Lego, for example. These bags are a game changer, because you know what? You just open it up, undo the sack, and then there's Lego all over the floor, and then you just kind of scoop it all back up and pop, pop it back away. Game changer. Can't get that back in. Ugh. There we go, did it. So we've got this little tent teepee thing. The children are in school, and before they go to school, the girls tuck in their babies, I'm not allowed to call them dollies, their babies and their bunnies in for a little nap while they're in school in the tent. How cute is that? This seat is, I think, moulded to William's bottom. He loves it. He just loves sitting here. Um, they have got the switch, so he does enjoy playing his little games here. This is my seasonal tree, which goes into the lounge to be decorated for Christmas and Easter and all the things. <sighs> now there's going to be a little bit... Oh, I don't know if I'm going to open this cupboard and show you. Oh, this is a cupboard of doom, guys. It's a cupboard of doom. Okay, are we ready? Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, see this is all the stuff that I just want to shut the... Oh, do you know what? I'm just going to shut this very quickly. Let's just pretend we haven't seen in there. I think that needs a massive organise. <laughs> I can't believe I just showed everyone on the internet that cupboard of doom. But do you know what? Everyone has a cupboard of doom. You might think, you know, that everything looks neat and tidy. My kitchen looks pretty neat and tidy. But I've got a massive cupboard of doom that needs sorting and I think everyone has, so just remember that. For every shiny, clear kitchen surface, there's always a cupboard of doom. So this is the playroom slash Dylan's room when he's home. And I'm actually really thrilled with how we've been able to use this space. It's just nice to be able to have a different room to watch TV in if someone's watching something and someone else wants to watch something else or play a game or whatever it might be. So I'm genuinely thrilled with how this room has turned out. Heading up the stairs. Now, shall we start in my room, which is reasonably tidy, or the children's room? Let's start in the children's room for some super realistic room touring. Now, this is Zara's room. She's six. Sometimes you can't see this at all. She's tidied it up a little bit. Do you know what? This room is not Pinterest perfect. It's not Insta perfect. It's lived in and it's real. She has a million soft toys on her bed because that's what makes her happy. I keep saying, should we put some of these away? But they make her happy and she's six. So would this be better if it was totally clear? Yes. Would that make me happy? Probably. Would it make her happy? No. This makes her happy. <laughs> we did have a big sort out last year of the bookshelves. So the bookshelf used to be down here. I've swapped them around so she can actually reach the boxes and pull these down because I don't let them pull down the above the head boxes. I ask them to ask us to do that so I don't pull them on the head. But she can reach these two bottom boxes and now she can reach all the books in her library, as she calls it. And we did have a massive sort out of toys and books and we donated a load to the school. We could probably do with doing that again. So this is Zara's room, which, as I said, probably needs a lot of work, probably needs a big declutter and sort and everything, but... Hey, real life. Into William's room. And he loves it in here. I feel like this room could do with a bit of a, a sort around. Like maybe moving the big cupboards and moving the bed across that way would work. And then perhaps moving the built-in wardrobes down here. He has got a massive amount of storage in here, which he does use. But it's not a massive bedroom. He does utilise this um, little sofa bed thingy he sits on a lot underneath to read. But in here, I wonder if like maybe a Murphy bed coming down or something to create more space would work. But I think really this room should have been bed across the end, wardrobes down here. So if I sort of regret anything, it's the placement of these built-in wardrobes. I would say cuts the room in a funny way. But you know what? Never mind. William loves it. So that's all that really matters. Into Bella's room, which she loves. Is it Pinterest perfect? No. Does she love it? Yes, she does. She loves it. She's got loads of toys. Not as many as Zara, actually, that live on her bed religiously. Um, this bed looks quite short, but believe it or not, I'm five foot four and I can lie on that end to end without bending my knees. This bed does extend out, but for now, we're just kind of making the most of the space. She's got her dressing table, desk type thing, which sometimes is reasonably clear, sometimes it's quite cluttered. But you know what, she's eight, it doesn't matter. So we've got some more Calyx in here. I've gotta say, these bags, which I adore, but I was using these hooks, as you can see, that one has slipped down. Some of them have come off the wall, um, which is not ideal. So they've not been as strong as I was hoping they'd be, even though the bags are empty. So maybe I need to look at 
stronger fixings of some description and all of the wardrobes upstairs are built in and do you know what all of the other wardrobes upstairs are a bit dirty and in need of a clean because you know real life i have not cleaned these mirrors in a while and they need doing so in here we've got our airing cupboard which i used to have a washing basket in but then i'd realize i'd empty the washing basket into one of these baskets now you might be like really that's an obscene amount of baskets and it is i will agree with you but sometimes all of these are out so when i'm packing i pack into a basket per person before i pack into you know into the cases or sometimes a pack per day so sometimes all of these are just used for packing and every time I go downstairs, I just take that out, that'll go downstairs, and then I've still got baskets for people to fill up with washing. And then when the washing's all done downstairs, they get transferred back into these, they're given to the children, one per person, to put away. And the system works, you know what? The system works. That's my dressing gown slung in there to dry, but you know what? Never mind, let's not even look at that. Close the door. Then in here, I'm gonna turn the light on, but it does make a whirring noise so you're gonna have to excuse the noise because it's got the extractor pan so in here best thing ever storage in the last house it was a bigger house but it felt more cluttered because there wasn't as much storage so we'd have things like deodorants you know this is what it would look like this it would look our house would just look like that all the time it just you know and there's nothing wrong with that but it's harder to clean because you've got to move it all and it just doesn't look as neat. However, if you sling it all in the, the drawers like that and then, oop, and then down here I've got cloths and things, cloths and face wipes, it keeps the surfaces clear. And then in here we've got toiletries, spare toilet rolls, face creams, and toothbrushes and I can, do you know what? Close the door on it. And then over here, we've got the spare fill up soap, more toiletry stuff. All of this stuff would have just been left out in the last house. Why I didn't just get better storage in the last house is beyond me. Do you know what else is good? I've got space to store cleaning products. So what I do is I grab a cloth from down there, some cleaning products from up there, and almost every time I'm in the bathroom, I wipe something and then I just throw the cloth into the bath Oh, much like that. There you go, a dirty cloth in the bath from something that was being wiped earlier. I just throw any wet and dirty stuff into there and then I keep it separate from the dry and dirty stuff because I find if you leave wet laundry in with dry laundry, potentially you can get like a yucky mold issue. Whereas if you keep the wet stuff separate, you know that that's gotta be washed as a priority. So yeah, there you go. Told you I haven't been around to check. There's a dirty cloth in my bath, but that's the system we use. So I also need to carry that down as well as all that. And then into my bedroom, or my bedroom shared with my husband, our bedroom, I guess. And I really do like this room. This is an ottoman bed. So there's so much junk under there, I can't even tell you. All my winter clothes in summer, summer clothes in the winter, absolute game changer. I did buy matching, you might think this is extra, but it makes a difference. So I've got a pale pink one, and my husband has got a gray chili bottle. So we've always got water in the night, I don't know about you, gotta have water in the night, I hate waking up thirsty, but I wouldn't like a glass of water in case something landed in it and it doesn't keep its temperature and just generally goes yucky. But that keeps it nice and cold for whenever we need to hydrate. In here, inside the wardrobes, we recycled all the calyx from the old house in the attic. So these are just calyx and in between the calyx, there are like hanging rails to form these hanging rails. So we've got that higher and a lower hanging rail. In fact, all the inside of all the cupboards upstairs are kind of formed like this. But rather than having drawers, I've got these baskets on these kind of runner things, which were all Ikea. These weren't Ikea, these were Amazon. And then these were Ikea, this is Ikea. And this is my chair. And what do I mean by chair? This has been a game changer. This is my chair, I'm gonna show you my husband's chair and I'll explain what the chair is. Don't look at how dirty the mirrors are, please. Let's ignore that. So this drawer is my husband's chair. Now in the last house, we just had a chair, or it's sometimes called a floor drobe or a chair drobe, where people put things that are too dirty to be clean and put away in a drawer and too clean for the wash and they go on the chair or the floor drobe. Now by allocating my husband this is your chair equivalent in the drawer and I've got mine over there in the corner. It just means that we're able to keep surfaces clear. And to be honest, most of being organized 
tends to be about creating a system because without a system, people don't know where to put things. The other thing I do love is this. Now, I showed my auntie this and she said it was the laziest thing she'd ever seen, but there's a reason for it. There's a reason for this craziness and bear with me. Alexa, turn dressing table off. Now, the main reason I like this is have you ever had hair straightener paranoia? I'm gonna get these out with one hand to show you. So, if the dressing table is off, and I can check this from the app on my phone, my hair straighteners might be physically on, but they're off, do you know what I mean? They're like, they're not on. However, Alexa, turn dressing table on. Now, because the dressing table is on, the hair straighteners are on. So there's no more, oh, did I turn my hair straighteners off? Is there gonna be a fire? Because I can turn off or check that I've turned off the dressing table from my phone. I can go, Alexa, turn dressing table off. And now my dressing table is off, so my hair straighteners are too. Now I try and belt and braces, click them off as well. But that, for me, has been a game changer because I can't tell you how many times I'm like, oh, did I turn my hair straighteners off? Did I, you know, it's like an iron would be another good example. You could put an Alexa switch on your iron and then you could check after you've left the house, have you actually turned it off without being paranoid. Please tell me I'm not the only one that gets paranoid about whether they've turned things off. So one thing I would say is that this house is smaller than our last house, but it's easier to keep clean and tidy. And that's because I put so much more thought into the systems I want to have in place. Things like the drawer instead of the floor or the chair or the floor drove. That's made a massive difference. Hiding the coffee in that cupboard made a massive difference. Having the system to sort the washing from the dryer into, so it's not just in piles and piles. It used to just be in baskets in the corner of my bedroom in the last house before we did actually set up, we did set up that laundry system in the last house to be fair, but only within the last year before we moved probably. And having these systems in place just means it's easier. Like I'm actually slightly flawed that the girls have managed to keep that desk so neat downstairs. And it's because there's a system in place and they actually like it when things are neat. They like being able to find their stuff. They like being able to find their pens. They don't like tidying up, but if you make it easy for them, they're just that little bit more likely to do it. So thank you so much for coming round my very realistic, don't look too close at the dust on the mirrors kind of house tour. I hope you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and do the YouTube things and click on a video that's on screen now and I'll see you over there. Bye.